That's a big one. Uh, I think that uh, they rebound the ball really well. Uh, they have great size and length. They play those guys together a lot. I think two years ago when we were at the Seagull Center, we, we limited the VCU to two offensive rebounds and won the game. Last year, of course, they, they had their way on the backboard and, and we lost the game. So that's a big, um, you know, they have a lot of very positive factors. That's a very, very big key to their success, I think, is the ability to go get offensive rebounds and, and convert them into points. How important, when you talk about containing the glass, how important is it to have a body at all times on Justin Tillman in the post? Yeah, I mean, he's, you know, even when you do have a body on him, you know, he can he can jump over the guy. He has great instincts. Um, you know, he, he works really hard. So it's, it's very important to just try to limit his opportunities as much as you can. I don't know if you could completely eliminate them, but you have to try to limit them as much as you can. And when he does get the offensive rebound, hopefully he's not quite as close to the basket. And, and so maybe even force him to throw the ball out. But, uh, but he, he's really he's played great. I know how much he's, he's improved since he's been there. And I'm sure he's worked really hard. So it's, uh, it's critical to make sure that, that you, it, both while they're running their offense and when the shot goes up, to, to know where he is and, and have a body on him. You guys approach every game the same, I know. Maybe maybe year in and year out, this one might have a little bit more you know, juice. But, but with, with the, add the fact that you guys are both now at the top of the league. Yeah. You know, how much does that kind of add to the feeling in the locker room and maybe just kind of the buzz around this one? Sure. Well, it, it does to a certain extent. It would be hard to get any bit more of a buzz than every time we play, to be honest. Uh, the games are, uh, are always exciting. They always have a, a great buildup. Uh, the atmospheres are tremendous, so it's it's very you know I, um, I'm obviously very pleased about where we are in the standings, and I'm sure that'll add a little bit. But it, it would be hard for it to get much more intense and exciting than it already is. How proud are you of your team after having a pretty tough game last Sunday against George Mason to come back out and win the next two in a row? Yeah, I, I, I am. I, I feel like you know I, I thought Mason played really well, uh, but I also feel like we didn't. Um, go into the game with enough of a, um, just like a demonstrative, uh, intense mindset. And, um, and they played really well and, and, and made us, you know, try to battle all the way back and into and and a deficit that was too great for us to overcome. Uh, but we did respond. I thought we played really well and tough against Rhode Island. And I wish we had played a little bit better defense against Duquesne, but we certainly played a, a great and exciting game where we moved the ball very nicely and, and had guys score. So I'm pleased, you know, you have to take care of your home court as, as best as you possibly can in this conference and probably any conference in college basketball. So I'm really pleased with where we are. Along those lines, it seems like when you guys come out full of fire and start well, it bodes well. And when you don't, you have a hard time making that yeah. up. It's just the course of the season. Yeah, sure. I, I think that that has been the case more or less. And uh, it's really important to, to get off to a good start on the road, uh, especially on Wednesday in, in that kind of an environment. Uh, so it'll be, it'll be really important for us to, you know, that doesn't mean you make your first few shots or anything. It's just more your mindset and how you're defending what your positioning looks like, how the ball moves. Uh, so those things hopefully will do well right from the jump. And, and uh, you know, that, that if you can do those things well during the course of the really high emotion of the game, you get yourself settled in and, and start to play in, in a quicker amount of time. Was Rhode Island probably the closest you guys got to playing a full 40 minutes that you've seen this season? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, the game became a little bit choppy in the second half because of the fouling, and and uh, you know, it seemed that it was it was constantly interrupted, but probably so. I think that's a really good team that we were able to extend our lead in the second half, and um, you know, for the most part, it was you know the the, the outcome of the game wasn't necessarily in question. So, uh, for a team of that capability and that talent level, for us to play like that probably is our was our best game. Kind of following up on that for, for this one, is do you blueprint that a little bit? I mean, they also have some big guy like Martin inside and, you know, some of the same things you have to look yeah. out for here, at least from the outside. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I feel like their, their talent level is also really high, like VCU's. Um, the way they can go get the ball off the backboard is, is similar. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd say VCU is probably faster um, and, and, you know, up and down the lineup from the, from the guards to the front court players. So that's another added element of – uh, trying to not only uh, defend the backboard, but also trying to keep up with them in the first place and could put you in bad position. So y we need to make sure we limit our turnovers and um, not let them get any easy baskets because, you know, they, they, they get themselves easy baskets off of the backboard enough. 
when you speak to your team about about playing VCU again, I, I know the approach is the same for everybody. Mm-hmm. But did, is there more of a Ray Ra? You know, let's go, right. let's beat these guys. They're your rival, or is it just to let's go take care of business? This is just like any yeah. other day. Probably a combination. You know, I, I you know Bob and I have talked about this over the years. In that it, it'd be it's it's harder and harder now to ignore. You know what the coach decides. It's harder to just ignore the the outside world because of social media and how much they're involved in that. So, um, you know, winning streaks, losing streaks, rivalries. Those those are all pointed out to them so often in their world on their phone that it'd be hard to just say, "Hey, this is just another game." I just think they're well aware of it. Not only the guys who have played in it, but the the younger guys. So, I think we embrace it. Uh, I think that I, I think it's great that we have a rival of this. Um, caliber, like the ri- a rivalry that's this intense, that, that, that makes it fun. It makes it part of a great experience playing college basketball, and I, I don't know that there are many that are, that are more intense. Any concerns for the freshmen as this is their first interaction with that? Sure. I mean, concerns with them for everything. Uh, but I, I, think, I think they'll do well. They've certainly seen enough of these games, um, you know, being that the, the, you know, DeMonte and, and, uh, and Nick grew up here. Uh, I, I think they'll I'm sure there'll be some butterflies in there, but hopefully, as soon as they, you know, go after that first ball or dive on the floor, hopefully that'll it'll it'll be a game after that. So hopefully they can get themselves into the game as quickly as possible, so that they're settled as quickly as possible. First five minutes are like each half. I know you mentioned that before, how important it is in a game, but I guess it's doubly important when you're on the road against yeah. a quality team like VCU. It is. It is. I I, I feel like. You know, it's a it's a place where the home team can really generate a lot of confidence, and so if you can just stand toe to toe with that team, then that's a really big help. You know, um, because when when uh, you know after the excitement of the game, you know they they can just generate confidence out of making a a shot or a block shot or a hustle play. You need to stand toe to toe and try to match them for those early, uh, and then let the game settle into its own rhythm. Uh, but but if you, if you're not there at the beginning or the beginning of the second half uh, at 100%, then, then things can slip away from you. Anything else, Coach? Do you have any uh, update on Grant Golden's status? So uh, yeah, so Grant uh, has not been cleared yet by our, do- our doctors, and the timeline right now, uh, you know, as the season progresses and we get into into February, uh, it, you know, we're we're not sure. In term of when he would be cleared, and he has not been cleared yet. His he's in good health, but he hasn't been cleared to come back and play college basketball. So, uh, what we'll do is we're going to continue to monitor him, um, and if it if it doesn't look like he's going to be able to come back, we'll apply for a medical hardship red shirt at the at the end of the year. Um, and so, uh, he's he's working hard at it, and, and we're working hard with him. But uh, no return date has been set because he hasn't been cleared enough to play. The threshold for games that you can still get the, the medical red shirt. I believe it's uh, a third of the games in the first half of the season. Some of them are thirty percent of the games the first half of the season. So, uh, but you know, we you do that. You know, on a on a on a someone you're redshirting from the beginning of the year, you might hold them out and announce you're redshirting them. This would be where we're applying for it afterwards. How has that changed your rotation pattern? When a guy you know that you were expecting to play yeah. significant minutes, how has that affected the rotation? Sure, well, you know um, it has significantly changed it because uh, just you know Grant's a really good player. We'd love to have him in there, and when we were we were trying to put him in and then put him in in two different spots, or put him in and have TJ play a different spot, and so in a way it has it has settled things down in terms of how much maneuvering you're doing with that in there. But we've obviously lost a, a really terrific player, so. Um, but I think it's made us a little bit more um, concrete in terms of we know who's going in for what guy and what, where he's going to play. It has, it has, it has stabilized us in that way.